Andy Warhol said, being good in business is the most fascinating kind of art. In the art business, galleries build and protect an artist's market. Say you were gonna buy a $200,000 painting. I think you should take that money, tie it up, and hang it on the wall. Galleries and dealers sell art straight from an artist's studio, the primary market, or in the secondary market, which is art that's been sold and owned before. In the art market, the more history something has, the more valuable it can become. People feel reassured if something's already been bought. There are three reasons that people buy art. Genuine love of it for investment or to raise their place in society. Say you want to take your 200 grand to a gallery to buy a new painting by a hot artist. People often confuse quality and price. It's always counterintuitive. You see one you like, but you're told it's not available by a dealer that sells it to a prestigious collector with museum ties the next day. But why? Warhol's gallerist, Leo Castelli, was the first to value who an artwork sold to more than how much it sold for. Where it's going is very important. Being placed in a prestigious collection is always helpful for an artist's career. Most successful gallerists have built on the Castelli model, understanding that a museum can allow an artist to outlast market shifts and trends. When it happens, you feel you've done something really good for the artists you work with. Today, there are galleries whose success hinges on long-lasting and personal relationships with their artists. It's a tough, tough business. We realized that galleries were important. And some of them grow to be mega galleries. The artist is no longer the brand name. The brand name is the gallery. There's competition between galleries, too. You just have to realize that if you have too big a success, they're going to leave. There are even artists who don't think they need galleries, like Damien Hirst, who cut out his gallerist by taking work straight from his studio to auction in 2008. What do you mean? There was a big question whether his dealers would support it. To sell everything is really a very exciting kind of moment. Or maybe they do. I don't want to compete with Gagosian. I want to be in the middle to develop artists before they get carried off by the big boys. This is Stefan Simkowitz. Can I stop you for a second? He's been criticized for investing in the work of young artists and practicing an art world equivalent of the pump and dump. You listen to this bullshit, and I'm, of course, the flipper du jeu. Is Stefan Simkowitz the Donald Trump of the art world? His model doesn't sit well with galleries who prefer to buy back or find new buyers for work that collectors want to sell. In most cases, they will give me the opportunity to sell it, and sometimes they can, and sometimes they can't. This is how they protect their artist's market. And if I can, it goes to auction, and at least I had the opportunity. When a gallerist loses control of an artist's market, the results can be devastating. And then suddenly the auction prices fail, and their career is heavily damaged. This is why the long-term approach fostered by gallery giants has nurtured so many careers. But the model is less and less viable for galleries that can't afford to keep inventory. They're losing their prime artists to Uber galleries, and they're losing sales on the bottom to the internet. Galleries are recognizing the need to have an online presence. We're the world of Instagram, quick or fast. Yes, we are impatient. Some see more value in the online art market than others. The value of art that people will buy on the internet is going up. A couple of years ago, we would have said, nobody will buy anything over $5,000. Now it's over $25,000. The art business has failed in upgrading itself in the 21st century. Picasso said that art is the currency of the infinite. You know, and that's the beauty of art. It does evolve. Then he said, I'm rich. I should know. For me as a gallerist, what matters is to show art of exceptional quality and one that I can stand proud today and, and in 10 years from now. Dealing art and running a gallery is an increasingly costly business. If you want to compete, you have to innovate. Find new collectors, expand through technology, or discover the next great artist. As for the value of what's on the wall, only time will tell.